Hi all, welcome again. So yeah, for today's session, we are planning for about the API. So um, basic stuff, we are going to study about API. Uh, as a manual tester, what all activities we are going to target from the API manual perspective, okay? So I'll be briefing you about the theory part on the API side and post the theoretical part, we'll be conducting some uh, more practical demos as well, okay? So basically guys, API testing using Postman tool. Here, the uh, we are performing API testing and the tool name is the Postman, okay? Let me go to the another slide. Before going too deep into the API, right? Before that, we need to understand one basic concept regarding the uh, client and server model, okay? So when it comes to the API, it is uh, very much useful to understand what is the client, what is the server, right? So this is from the computer network uh, background, okay? From the computer side, we need to understand, okay? For example, uh, like we are using our day-to-day -day devices, the laptops, the tablets, mobiles, as well as the computer systems, right? So these are the end devices or we, in a simple word, we can say client, right? all the uh, all these different different devices are connected to the internet right when it comes to the mobile where we can connect using the mobile internet or the wi-fi as well and sim like other devices we can connect using the internet cable or wi-fi right so these are the client devices okay and we are we are going to connect these devices basically we are connecting these devices to the internet using mobile internet or uh, broadband internet or wireless internet right okay so once we uh, like enter any website any url into the browser for example we are operating it from the laptop and we are going to open one browser that is the chrome browser and inside the chrome browser we are just browsing for www.google.com right so that one is the website url we are entering up and uh, for in order to have visibility for the particular url we must be connected to the internet right and like some data request we are sending from our computer system browser to the internet and from there uh, around the globe there are different different ser uh, servers place okay so who are providing services to us for example when we are trying to search for facebook so we are getting the data right for the particular website for login for particular friend. Likewise, we are getting data from some another computer in short word we'll say, okay? So that one is the remote computer which is placed around the world, okay? And which is connected to our system using the internet, right? So this is a basic simple architecture uh, for the client and server. So in between your client and server for now, the internet is connected, okay? So let's go uh, into some basic structures related to this architectures. Okay. See. Sir, can you repeat again the client and server? Yeah, sure, sure. I'll be just yes, uh, repeating the stuff. Okay. Okay, fine. So basically, see, there are three kind of architectures into the client and server model. Okay. So the first one architecture is very much simple. Here you'll see, uh, it's a simple standalone your computer computer means it can be your pc it can be your laptop right that one is your simple standalone computer and indoor computers uh, we have hard drives right where we are stored, storing our data files for example we are storing our document file right A different different images then different different videos movies games softwares right so this all stuff we are storing into the our computer that is hard drive okay so in a tier one architecture or one tier architecture basically what we have we have a computer that is the laptop we can say our desktop we can say and into our systems we already have some inbuilt uh, installed hard drives right and that act as a file server so basically in terms of file we are storing different data files uh, like <coughs> uh, data files for example video files uh, then we have audio files then we have data file uh, which includes your pdf different different images and all right 
so in a single layer architecture or we can say in a one tier architecture all the stuff is inside the single system only okay when it comes to the two tier system okay uh, into the two tier system there are there is a separation in between client computer and database layer okay uh, we can take an example of any our bank systems any college systems where we have a dedicated computers let's take an example of bank in case of bank right uh, for different different employee they'll be having their dedicated systems okay so yeah uh, that comes under the end client computers it may be the computer laptop okay and when it comes to the database so all the users client users are requesting for a data which is not stored into their local system but the that data is stored into one central server within that particular uh, branch okay or within that particular college for example so in this situation a uh, database server is different see guys server is nothing but a kind of computer but it is having a higher ram okay ram their higher hard drive storage okay higher into the computation power okay so basically here we have a dedicated set of computers which are allocated to the clients and we have a central database server where we are storing all our data so this one is the two tier architecture in in this scenario there are uh, two different kind of machines one are the client tier and another one is the database tier okay so this one is the two tier symbol a database server and remaining are the clients all clients are communicating with the this particular database server for uh, getting the required information okay and when it comes to the three tier architecture okay so there are uh, three kind of uh, layers available one is the end client computers okay the end computers and in between your end computers and the database layer there is one another layer that is the business layer okay so based upon this business layer all the communication happens in between your client and database layer so these are the three different tiers of the architecture we have when it comes to the client and server i'll repeat one more time one tier means a single standalone computer okay where all the data is stored within the same computer when it comes to the two tier architecture we have two different devices we have two different systems okay uh, like client end different different computers and we have centrally one database server okay that is the computer only but with high amount of ram high amount of storage space okay and uh, there uh, there is third one type that is the three tier architecture where we already have a different layer of client computers we already have a central database server okay we already have one database server but for communication in between a client and server we have some business we have implemented some business logic so that one is the third layer fine so these are the three types of different architecture so see when it comes to the one tier architecture you can simply consider as your computer so in the single uh, tier architecture we don't need internet because it's a standalone device your standalone computer standalone pc fine data is stored into the same computer hard drive that is the important thing for example file server okay we can take a example of any computer which is storing the file right that is the one tier architecture when it comes to the two tier architecture as i explained okay for example uh, okay in case of bank internal database server connected to each other using lan okay there is no need of internet connectivity for internal communication okay but obviously for the external communication we need internet connectivity that is the different thing but for internal communication data sharing file sharing there is no need of uh, internet connectivity you can just have an another example for example one printer is connected to the but uh, connected within the particular bank right and all the users are sharing the same device right likewise all the devices are connected into the lan and they are communicating with each other without internet using lan network okay that one is the two tier architecture lan, 
लैन नेटवर्क दैट मीन लैन केबल का यस यस लैन केबल एंड स्विच और स्टैंडर्ड स्विच नेटवर्क स्विच all all computer cables are connected to that switch so that all computer can communicate with each other okay 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 that mean one uh, lan cable connected series and uh, store in one uh, computer data yes yes basically uh, in this architecture we have different different client computers uh, like they are they are connected using for example lan cable okay into their lan port and all the lan cables are connected to the central switch and we uh, to the same switch we also have database server connectivity so there is no need of internet connectivity for uh, data exchange in between them okay 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 fine okay but when it guys when it comes to the three tier architecture basically here business logic comes in a picture for example <clears throat> here compulsory we need a internet okay client is nothing but your client end computers and we are making use of browsers for example google chrome uh, right chrome browser we have then firefox we have internet explorer right edge we have safari we have these are the different kind of browsers which we are using on the end client computers for accessing the internet right so for this purpose in internet is very much important okay and in between your database layer for example let's consider take an example of facebook right from the client computer we are opening up the uh, google chrome browser for example and we are entering up the facebook website www.facebook.com right so in this scenario we are sending a request from client computer okay uh, for particular web page right so based upon the business logic based upon the validation checks and all right uh, this particular application server allow us to interact with the database for example we are trying to register new user or we are trying to log in the uh, new user for example let's con uh, assume we have done with the registration now we are trying to log in with the particular user credential valid username and valid password so in this situation from the client computer from the google browser we are entering up the username and password and particular username and password is gets validated based upon the data right because at the time of registration whatever username we have created and password along with that will get stored into the database and the business logic the logic behind the validation checks and some all we are going to implement into the application server requests once we get hit to the application server it will be fetching the data validation will be done and if we are a valid user then only we are going to allow for a login right and if we are an invalid user it is going to show us some uh, error message right that we have studied into the manual so nowadays most of like most of the applications are into the three tier architecture where end customer or end client computers are there uh, using the browsers different different browsers we are sending up the request based upon the particular application website business logic they'll be pulling out the data from the database server and sending us to uh, sending us to the browsers right so this one is the three tier architecture okay so likewise like client computers are nothing but our systems from end user can operate and uh, within our computers we will be using browsers in order to make a use of internet right <coughs> then uh, we are sending up the particular url right and this, uh, the similar url will get <coughs> have some business logic implemented into their server and based upon that business logic they will be pulling out the data Guys, okay, so all this stuff we are going to see into the practical. Okay, this is just a, a pictorial representation for the three-tier architecture. Okay, <coughs> so <coughs> sorry, going more deep into the three-tier architecture here, I'll I'll try to simplify more. Okay, so basically, first one client end layer is nothing but the presentation layer. Okay, the website front end, where that front end basically made up of your html javascript and css right that one is the, your front end whatever we are seeing from the website perspective from the front end end user perspective that one is the presentation layer 
when it comes to the application layer that one is the business logic layer for example let's take an example of facebook okay whatever the logic they have implemented whatever the code they have implemented that is rest inside into the application layer and different programming languages are used for making a code right <coughs> for example java dot net c sharp python c plus plus these are the programming languages which are used by the developer for um, coding the application layer or coding the business logic okay and when it comes to the database guys because a database plays always a crucial role into the application side for the validation for the storing data right so uh, there are different kind of database available into the <coughs> uh, industry right for example mysql oracle postgres sql SQL Server, MongoDB. These are the few examples of the database servers. Okay, these are the database servers. And for in order to access this database server, we are making use of one SQL. That is the structured query language. Okay, that one is the programming language we are making use for the communication. So these are the three layers, guys. One is the presentation layer, right? That is the front end layer. Then we have application layer. That one is the business layer where developers are making a code for the programming logic and third one is the data layer where our data particular website particular company data stores into the servers so these are the three layers okay so here we are mainly focusing upon api right before that we understood client is nothing but the end computer where the browsers are there for making the request and viewing the response right that is the front end layer okay that is fine front end understood okay jaise hame front end pata chala front end means humne koi bhi computer system open kiya koi bhi laptop ho koi bhi mobile ho koi bhi device ho wahan se koi bhi browser humne open kiya and from there uh, will be entering facebook website so hame kya dikhta hai particular web page pe facebook ka website dikhta hai that is the front end layer okay fine understood yahan tak to hame clear hai right then second thing comes in a picture that is the business logic jo particular company hai for example facebook hai jo bhi hai whatsapp hai unka jo bhi business logic rahega wo unke particular development team ne wahan pe code kiya hoga right and database is nothing but the storage for a particular data जब हम कोई भी थ्री टीयर थ्री टीयर आर्किटेक्चर एप्लीकेशन देखते हैं तो उसमें थ्री लेयर्स आते हैं राइट सो विदाउट योर फ्रंट एंड जो भी टेस्टिंग होता है ना दैट कम्स अंडर योर एपीआई ओके यहाँ पे आपको कहीं पे फ्रंट एंड लेयर दिख रहा है क्या एंड कस्टमर या क्लाइंट कंप्यूटर दिख रहा है यहाँ पे गाइस हेलो नो राइट यस सिंपल लाइन है विदाउट फ्रंट एंड we are going to perform api testing okay then there will be a next question how jaise humne jo bhi abhi tak as of now jo bhi manual testing perform kiya with the help of front end kiya matlab koi to browser launch kiya humne and with the help of url jo bhi hamara application ka url rahega wo enter karke humne testing perform kiya but in case of api testing without help of front end without help of any browser we are going to perform the api testing so yes let's see so uh, in case of api testing your front end layer is missing we are directly sending request through some interface right and uh, yes we are performing api testing so basically it hints the api stands for application programming interface why because it is the interface between two software application we'll see into the detail okay let's take an example of some real life example so that it will be easy for you guys to have understanding okay let's take an example of hotel okay once we uh, go to any hotel once we visit any hotel right what we are doing we are just sitting up on the table and we are requesting or we are ordering for the food right we are ordering the food so waiter comes up uh, and takes the order for example uh, abc food we need so we just provide the particular order name to the waiter he is taking up the order right and he is visiting the kitchen and for a particular chef for a particular cook he will be passing up the information hey like 
particular <coughs> customer demands uh, particular customer orders this, this specific food so here like in a kitchen food will be prepared and particular once the food is prepared right <coughs> the particular waiter is going to serve the same food to the customer so that is the real life example okay let's uh, uh, have an analogy let's compare this example with api when it comes to the api right end customer is using the application right and with the help of api right with the help of api which is behaving as a waiter we are sending request okay and similar request api sending to the server right and once uh, the request is processed then upon the process of particular request uh, server is again sending response through the api and again the api providing response to the customer so that is what happening uh, in case of api so let's go uh, deeper into the api like why do we need api okay hame api ki zarurat kyu hai like hum with the help of front end bhi kaam kar rahe hai right hum testing kar sakte hai end user unka jo bhi particular application hai uska use kar sakta hai but why it is so important to have api in place iska sabse main importance ye hai guys ki without exposing the actual business logic of particular company to any another company we can provide services let's take an example for example aapka koi bhi मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन है ओला कार बुकिंग के लिए राइट फ्लाइट बुकिंग के लिए कोई भी आपका एक जस्ट टेक एन एग्जांपल टिकट बुकिंग के लिए कोई भी एग्जांपल लेते हैं फॉर एग्जांपल आपका ओला बुकिंग का एप्लीकेशन है राइट वे वी आर ट्रैकिंग द पर्टिकुलर व्हीकल राइट यू विद द हेल्प ऑफ मैप्स एंड हु इज प्रोवाइडिंग द मैप्स गाइस हु इज प्रोवाइडिंग द मैप्स Google, Google, Google. Correct. So Google Map is a product of Google, right? And we are using any uh, taxi application. We are using any taxi car application, movie, different different kind of application. But in all the applications, we we are using a same product that is the Google. So Google develop their programming logic. Google develop their everything, right? And they they can use. for their products as well but when it comes to the third party for example google ka map hai right wo use karna hai ola mein okay ola taxi mein ola car mein unke jo jo services hai usme agar use karna hai na to wahan pe api ka role aata hai jo bhi particular ola ki team hai right development team hai api ka use kar rahi hai right from google team okay aur particular api ko unke programming logic mein embedded karke पर्टिकुलर सर्विसेस अवेलेबल कर रही है राइट right? सो so, उससे क्या होगा कि ओला टीम को एंटायर गूगल का प्रोग्रामिंग करते बैठना नहीं है राइट विच विच इज अ वेरी मच टाइम सेविंग एज उनको कोई नया एप्लीकेशन इन्वॉल्व मतलब डेवलप नहीं करना है जो एग्जिस्टिंग एप्लीकेशन है दैट दे नीड टू यूज दैट इज द मेन बेनिफिट अगर हम बात करते हैं रिगार्डिंग टू अनदर एग्जाम्पल फॉर एग्जाम्पल हम प्लेन बुक करते हैं राइट वाइल बुकिंग ऑफ द फ्लाइट राइट सो so, वहां पे भी क्या होता है देखिए मेक माय ट्रिप डिफरेंट डिफरेंट वेबसाइट्स है कार बुकिंग के लिए बस बुकिंग के लिए वहां पे क्या होता है ना कि वेबसाइट कोई कंपनी का होता है बट उनके खुद के फ्लाइट्स थोड़ी होते हैं राइट उनके खुद के बसेस थोड़ी होते हैं बट स्टिल दिस पीपल्स आर एबल टू बुक द फ्लाइट फ्रॉम देयर वेबसाइट लेट्स टेक एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अनदर लाइक मूवी टिकट बुकिंग राइट फॉर एग्जाम्पल कोई भी बुक माई शो अपलिकेशन उनके खुद के थिएटर्स थोड़ी है थिएटर्स तो अलग डिफरेंट डिफरेंट ओनर्स के है राइट ओके डिफरेंट डिफरेंट उसके फ्रेंचाइजीज है बट उनका है ना थ्रू द एपीए कम्युनिकेशन होता है विद द डेटा बेस और वहां से उनको पता चलता है कि लाइक हाउ मेनी नंबर ऑफ सीट्स आर अवेलेबल हाउ मेनी नंबर ऑफ सीट्स आर बुक हाउ मेनी नंबर ऑफ you know uh, ki uh, percentage of seats are available and books so that all possibilities coming from the api okay where api plays plays a key role so in case of interaction in between two softwares without you making use of front end basically we can have a api in place and we can do the testing okay so fine so second question comes in the mind what are the great features of api so api always offers a valuable service in terms of data functions right 
as of now just it provides a different services okay it helps us to plan a business model in a simple flexible and very quick adaptive manner these are managed and measured okay and offers a great developer support basically this these are important features from the development perspective from a lemon user understanding from a normal user understanding we just need to understand it is a interface in between two softwares one software is sending a request to api api is taking that particular request getting the response and sending back to the particular requested user that is the main role of api okay so yes uh, when it comes to the yes uh, i'll be moving towards the tool and let's have uh, some practical so that you'll get some idea about the api okay so jaise uh, hum like uh, with regards to the api testing agar hum tools ki baat karte there are two kind of uh, two kind of apis being tested one is the rest api and another one is the soap api so for this particular session we will be morely focusing upon the restful api right and for that purpose we have a postman tool which is in place right okay postman is the tool using which we are going to perform the testing okay so see guys till now we have studied about the manual testing okay so let's have a overall idea about the different layers there are three kind of layers within the three tier architecture presentation layer business layer and database layer right so on the presentation layer front end layer we are performing gui testing right that is the graphical user interface testing yeah. functional testing we are basically performing on the presentation layer when it comes to the business layer that is the application layer here we are performing the api testing without without front end and when it comes to the database side here we are performing database testing so there are three kind of different testings upon based upon the different layers on front end we are going for the gui graphical user interface based testing and for business logic we are going for the api testing and when it comes to the database we are going for the database testing <coughs> and in case of manual as we have covered like we can make a use of a simple test case document and we can do a testing right and in case of automation we need to use selenium right with the help of any sort of programming language that one is the automation part when it comes to the uh, api manual side we are going to use a postman tool right which is a very famous and useful tool for the testing and when it comes to the database uh, guys there are different kind of database we can go ahead and with space uh, specific skill set we can go do the database testing as well okay so these are the three kind of testings available uh, these are the three kind of testings available uh, for a layer based architecture okay for this session like uh, as i discussed there are two kind of uh, sir so web services available one is the soap and another one is the restful out of that we'll be focusing more upon the restful and using the postman tool we are going to study this api testing right in order to understand the api testing we need to understand a major four request one is the get request then post request put request and delete request okay these are the four major request we are going to cover as part of this session okay fine guys okay for uh, in case of downloading postman we just need to postman for windows fine we just need to type postman for windows this one is the first link see guys uh, download postman right okay so here you'll see for now my computer system is 64 bit hence it is showing 64 bit right for in case of your sorry if your windows is 32 bit then you can install the similar like similar version will be fetch here you can download that as well okay for now i'll be just clicking up here okay so shortly see uh, shortly it will start downloading and by just clicking next next we need to install so this one is the simple process for the installation nothing more okay fine okay uh, let me share the application now installation very much easy guys just need to search for postman and you can download for windows okay. there is nothing more okay let me share the postman now okay uh, so is it visible postman screen guys hello yes sir 
okay fine fine sure great okay so basically this one is the postman screen i'll explain firstly how to use the postman okay then later on we'll deep dive into the different type of request so see on the top corner on the top left corner you'll be finding options like file edit view help okay these are the four different options out of that we'll be morely focusing upon the file option and edit option whenever required okay more let's focus upon the file option first okay so uh, let me open up the new postman window so that from start i'll like from start and scratch i'll explain you okay okay fine uh perfect okay so once you install the particular application you will be seeing this a uh, default window right so firstly we need to go over here right okay so this one is the main menu window okay uh, file edit view and help there is there is another window guys keep on mute okay mm, thank you okay there is another window that is the home workspace we have okay we'll see what uh, what is the use of it okay then we have api network report and all okay fine the, this one is the second menu bar right let me create the uh, first workspace in the first step we need to create a workspace workspace is nothing but a folder kind of where we are storing all our request so uh, i'll uh, just i'll write up api underscore testing API underscore testing. Okay, fine. You can write a quick summary for the same. In case of company project here, we'll be having a proper project name, then we'll be having a proper summary, right? For now, like see, here are also different options available. For now, personal, private, team, and public. For now, I'll be just keeping personal for my particular use, right? When it comes to the company, so they'll be having a different thing. For now, I'll be creating simple a personal workspace. Okay. Now see, once we created the workspace, that one is the first step. Okay. I'll be also providing these steps into the document as well. Okay. Text document as well. Don't worry about that. Okay. So let's focus upon the left side corner. You have to focus within a first step workspace create kiya na. So here like you'll be seeing a collection window right that is more important so within collection we need to create a new collection right here you'll see uh okay here is the collection option let's create a collection collection is nothing but group of request similar to your you can consider similar to your test suit which is a group of test cases right i'll be writing for example let's uh take collection one for example collection first I'll be just entering. So this one is my folder, collection folder. Okay, fine. Now third step is to add a request. There are basically different kind of requests inside the API testing, which we are focusing. Okay, third step is to add request. Click upon these three dots within the collection and click upon add request. See, by default, uh, it will create a request name. We can put like, for example, let's take an example TC001. This, for example, this one is our first test. Guys, here in case of API testing, test case is nothing but kind of your request. Okay. So this one is the title, for example, for particular request. Here you'll see uh, there are different kind of requests available. Out of that, most important are gate, post, put, right? patch delete we are going to see this one by one from here we can select the different request type okay then here we need to enter some url right and this basically the url required body right this all details we used to get from the development team okay all these details are documented we just need to create uh, some test cases surrounding to this api as well and we just need to provide the url so let me show some demo wait a moment so that will be having some idea let me check for the database documentation 
<clears throat> I'll firstly execute one request and then I'll be explaining to you. Okay. Okay, let me share that document first so that you'll have a clear idea. Is it visible, guys? The Excel document? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay. Jesse, guys, Jesse, humne, na, in case of the key, manual testing, Jesse, humne Excel document create kiya tha for the test case. In a similar manner, also, we'll be having a Excel documentation for the API testing. Okay. Here, for example, TCID is nothing but the test case ID. Then endpoint, these details will be receiving from the dev team, okay? Development team. This detail will be receiving from the uh, team, okay? Then uh, type of method, that is the gate, okay? Then this particular link also will be receiving. For now, we are not passing any data. Gate means provide the information. So for that reason, we don't need to uh, provide the body, right? The success response that is nothing but expected result. Okay, just say hum dekhte, in case of manual testing, that one is the expected. Here is the success response. When uh, it comes to the failure, there is another kind of response failure. This status code is important in case of API, which in which indicate which is having a specific meaning. Okay. And okay, these are the some validation stuff for now, just focus upon the execution. I'll be uh, taking up the first test case. Okay, let me capture this first URI. Okay, let me go to the postman. <clears throat> Fine. So what I'll be doing, I'll be creating a request. I'll be capturing up the particular URI, right from the documentation and just I'll be saving the particular request. So this one is my first request. So for now, like from Excel document, I have replicated data to the uh, replicated data to the postman tool. Okay. And uh, once we likewise will be creating different, different requests and likewise, we can create another request. Okay. For example, let me create some another request, dummy request 002. Let me save it. Likewise, you guys, uh, based upon the different different API requests, we'll be creating a multiple request. Now, once we create the test case in case of manual testing, then we are proceeding further ahead for the execution, right? In similar manner, in case of API testing as well, will be once we design up the test cases, API testing test cases, right? We'll be creating the request into the postman and then we'll be moving ahead with the execution. So for gate request, how we'll be executing, just we need to click upon the send. So see, here we'll see the result for the particular request. So we have received the entries, different, different entries, list of data. Okay, fine. This one is for seven ID. This one is for eight ID. Likewise, we have received a response. This one is called as a response. Okay. Here is the status code. You'll see here is the status code 200. Okay. The time taken for the request to process. For example, from this tool, we have shared the, or we have sent the request, right? And from the server side, we have received the response. Okay. So that one time is also calculated. Then the response size is also calculated. So without making use of any browser, we have um, sent one request. And uh, in response to that, we have received some response, right? So this one is the response data okay so as a part of api testing we need to validate this response as well as we need to validate this response code this response type and size and there are multiple different data as well headers okay so all the validation stuff is mentioned into the development documentation from that particular documentation see from that particular documentation we need to make a test case template like this right where we'll be we'll be pasting all the data right and once we receive the particular response this one is the success response we are expecting so it should return list of users in a page and response status code is a 200 
So once we receive a similar sort of response into the post one, we'll be making a test case as pass. See, we uh, by using this particular test case, we receive the list of employees or we can say list of data. Also, we have received this status code 200. OK, right. So it means the particular test case is pass. Purposefully, what I am doing, I am just entering the wrong details in order to showcase how the test case is going to fail. So now let me say send the data. Okay. <clears throat> so see guys, this one is dummy website. Okay, actually it is not behaving in a proper manner, but. Uh, in case of actual website it will show us a different status code as well as it will not show us the response okay let me try some random <clears throat> see likewise if the particular request is not fulfilled so in that situation will be not receiving any proper response Okay, in that situation, we will be not receiving a proper response. Hence, we can say particular uh, test cases fail. If a particular test case is fail, and if we are going to receive the proper response in that situation, we'll be passing up the particular test case. 